Caroline Haycock, Tour of Scotland. It's a quite short tour of Scotland, but it is a very small country. And uh, the point of this presentation really is to get you to the point where you'll understand an extremely bad joke, of which this is the uh, the setup. So that's the question: What's the or what's the difference between Bing Crosby and Walt Disney? Um, so, uh, okay. so, so this is also because some of my colleagues have had the chance to. Um, to say a little bit where they come from, and uh, this is my chance. So, <laughs> so I come from Scotland. So here's the UK. Scotland's up here. Um, a lot of people I met in the States actually thought it was an island of its own, which was interesting. But uh, also at war with England, which we have. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so Scotland, Scotland's up here. It includes uh, includes the these northern islands of Shetland and Orkney and these western islands here, which to, to British people seem remarkably remote. I was delighted to hear that the Faroese word for these western islands is the southern islands. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, so, um, well, I'll come back to it. So, so here is the capital of Edinburgh, um, also seems small until I went to the Faroe Islands, whose capital is even smaller, but ours is, so less than half a million people. And I, uh, I teach here, but I live part of the time over on the west coast, so, um, so there's Edinburgh, um, but, but unlike St. Petersburg, that's pretty much all there is, right? So, <laughs> so there's Edinburgh, so I live somewhere up here, and the university is up here, and uh, this is one of the many, many uh, unnecessary large number, actually, of ruined castles um, around this world. This is near where I live on the west coast, which is very beautiful and incredibly wet. Um, so, so just to say a little bit about the language situation in Scotland. Um, so Gaelic, which is a Celtic language related to, so in Scotland we call it Gaelic. It's related to Irish Gaelic. That has to do with the pronunciation of the two languages themselves. <coughs> Used to be spoken in most of Scotland. is now only spoken in the islands really up the west coast. And, and pretty much all of the speakers are bilingual. So it's a very threatened language. In the um, Shetland Islands, which many people indeed in Scotland think are about here, because in all of our maps we never go far. So these actually uh, these originally belonged to Norway until about the 15th century, when um, carelessly the Norwegian king, uh, his daughter was um, getting married to a Scottish king, and um, we demanded a dowry, um, and he didn't have the cash, so he put up Shetland and Orkney as a guarantee for the dowry, and then he never did pay up. So we got. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and in fact, uh, a Norse language was spoken in, uh, in Shetland at least um, for some time after that, um, but unfortunately is now lost. Gaelic is still spoken, but in most of Scotland, people speak, um, well, it's very contentious what you would call it, but so there's Scottish English, English with largely so um, little difference to standard Southern English, but with in so the pronunciation, and then a whole continuum to a, a really different dialect, which was once a different, considered a different language. Why it isn't now considered a different language is a, a, a whole interesting question. But just to give you some idea, this was actually uh, came out of listening to, to Janet's talk, where she was talking about um, some weirdnesses in imperatives, and it reminded me of these facts in Scottish English. So here's just, uh, this, these facts are true for people, even if they speak very fairly standard um, Scottish English as opposed to deep Scots. So negation looks, uh, uh, we have a different form of negation in Scots. So in, we've got both what looks like clitic negation, like doesn't, in standard English becomes disne. So dis, does, ne is the, um, is the clitic. Um, and if you are a Star, a Star Trek fan, so the engineer, Scotty, is always saying, she cannot take, she cannot take it, right? Canna, that's this, it's the, the negation. One thing that's striking, that's different, however, and this is 
uh, in normal, in, in normal? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. In most of your dialects of English, you can do this, right? In a question, you can front them. It's impossible. So, doesn't does she like it is ungrammatical. So, what we'd have to say instead is, does she know like it? Um, so, um, and, so th and this is what I was reminded of. Uh, so, Janet was pointing out this uh, interesting paradigm for, uh, for imperatives. So, in standard English, sit down, do sit down, don't sit down, but not do you sit down. And this just to point out, this actually, I think, a part of a clue to the fact that don't you sit down looks like it's kind of the similar syntax to the question. And I think the Scottish case shows you that it's less related than you think. We just saw that you can't say, didn't you sit down is ungrammatical as a question, but didn't you sit down is perfectly grammatical as an imperative. So this form here is good, which I think tells you that actually what's going on in the imperative is quite different to the question. Probably not really <coughs> So, if you actually want to know about these facts, you should read this paper by Andrew Weir, uh, once uh, an undergraduate at Edinburgh and now a postgraduate at UMass. Um, but uh, if all you want is the answer to the question, what is the difference between Ben Crosby and Walt Disney? Ben sings, but Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs>